Hey everyone, Liam here. Welcome to How to Speed Paint Drakari. As always, we're not going to be using an airbrush. This is going to be entirely brushwork. Hope the video is helpful. If you've got any feedback or comments, as always, leave them down below. I will say I messed up, as always, something with the footage on this one. I left the chat box from the live stream for this footage on the screen. I apologize for that. That's not normal, but it is what it is. If you want more advanced tutorials or if you just want to support me, please check out my Patreon. The link is in the description below and also get in contact for any one to one tuition that you might want or commission work. But here we go. So first thing we'll do is start off with a black base coat. The reason for this is because we want a really dark, deep purple to start off with. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do, mix up a So the first thing that we're going to do is start off with a model base coated black. You can use an airbrush if you want to. You can use a rattle can primer. You can use a paintbrush. It doesn't make any difference. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to cover the entire model in a purple. This is because I don't particularly like having black on the model. I find that it looks quite unnatural. Now, it's up to you whether you do that or not. But this particular purple <clears throat> is a 50-50 mix of P3 uh beaten purple as well as scale 75 ink intensity violet now it's the violet it's the ink that's important here what will happen is is the ink will give a really rich nice purple while the p3 beaten purple will just give it some consistency so it's not just like uh putting water all over the model so we start off with a mix of that that'll give you that nice deep purple and then when you put it over the black It'll effectively give you an off black. In regards to paint consistency for your base coat, there is no real way of me explaining exactly what consistency you want because your ideal consistency, that sweet spot in your paint, is always going to change depending on what paint you're using. For me, in this case, I only really want to have to do one coat. So I'm looking for my paint to be as fluid as possible while still being as opaque as possible. And then I only have to do one coat. To cover the whole model i appreciate a lot of people say two or three coats but you only need to do that if it's actually a requirement most of the time with most paints you can do it in one coat the next thing that i'm going to do is i add in white to the palette and then i'm going to gradually mix in more and more white into this purple by adding white into the purple you are desaturating it so you are taking away some of the color but it still keeps into that purple spectrum of color Whereas if you add red, it's going to go more magenta. Um, and if you are if you add blue, it's just going to go more blue. So what I'm doing, same as I did with the Dark Angels video, I'm, I'm putting that paint down where I want this armor to be brighter. So what I'm effectively going to do is I'm going to highlight a line down the, the leg of the model. And you can see that there. Same again, my paint is thinned down. So I've got a as opaque mark as possible while still being as fluid as possible. So that paint is as watery as possible while still leaving an opaque mark. Don't want to have to put down loads of coats because there's no need at this stage. The idea is that I'm just placing in where my highlights are going to be. I'm not worried about that transition just yet. Other thing to note is I'm not worried about the details. The all of the recesses the highlight areas like the edges and that sort of stuff will define those later so i'm not bothered about those details remember our paint is thin enough so if we paint somewhere we we shouldn't where we shouldn't or somewhere that is going to be another color we can easily just paint over it because we haven't got massively thick paint so i mean as a guide this particular paint is watered down to probably two parts water to one part paint but you need to find that sweet spot for yourself so remember then you paint down, test it out on a piece of kitchen roll or a piece of plastic or something like that to make sure that you've got a paint consistency that you're happy with. So next up, we're going to add more white to that purple mix. The idea here is we're going to go brighter within that previous layer of purple that we did. 
Again, not worried about transition. That's what we'll fix later on. This should very much be seen as quite an enjoyable stage. You just get to slap paint down. So the next up, so the next stage, we need to start bringing, bringing those hard transitions together. So what I'm doing in this case, first of all, I've gone brighter with this purple than I wanted to. And I did that intentionally. So what I'm doing next is with my original dark purple, the one that I used for the base color, I'm thinning that down. Now, in this case, it was probably three or four parts water to one part paint. But the idea that you want is that it's transparent. So what you're going to do is you're going to paint over what you've already done. Leave the brightest areas. So what you need to remember is every time you go over what you've already painted on the model, you're going to darken it. So if you don't want your purple highlight areas to go darker, don't go over those brightest areas. But what you want to do is you want to focus on the points where one color tra transitions to the next color. So that hard point where you've changed from, say, the mid-tone purple to the highlight purple. And then what that will do is it will soften that mark, that transition that you have. Now, Bear in mind, this is a speed paint. The whole idea of this is that it's supposed to be a fast way of doing your army. So this model took me about just under two hours, but if I was to batch paint them, and now that I know how to do them, it'd probably take me about an hour a model, probably 45 minutes. So the whole point of this is it's supposed to be fast. What The reason why that's relevant is because if it's an army, how perfect do you really need your transitions? The reality is, is not too much. So. The, th the more opaque you have your paint, so the less transparency it has, the, the faster you're going to soften that transition, but it's also not going to be as perfect. So the thinner your paint goes, the longer it's going to take to, to soften the transition between these colors, but the nicer the result you're going to get. So this is where you can decide how much time you want to invest into paint in your army and based on that depend would would depend on how quickly you get the result it's also worth noting that actually you can still get an amazing result with this again going back to the previous dark angel video is a similar process to how i did the dark angel and you saw the result was was really good on that so just something to think about your paint consistency will influence how quickly you make those transitions a little bit nicer but potentially depending on how opaque your paint is or how little trans transparency your paint has may not exactly end in a perfect transition but again this is army painting how how perfect does it really need to be so i've got two of the color palettes here so i just want to demonstrate exactly what i mean so if i use a paint that's partially transparent so let's say, for example, this is two parts water to one part paint, and I want to soften this hard line here. What I'll do, what it will look like is something like this, or not. And then that's our first transition. And then we can do it again. And then you can see that starts softening. And it's exactly the same with the lighter colors as well. So if we do it with that, and then that and then this gives us a transition because remember ultimately what we're doing is we're just building up layers of paint to soften out a transition but if we were to go thinner what that potentially means is that we could get a much nicer transition you see it's softer but it takes longer to get to a similar opacity as what we have up here so what you're doing is potentially sacrificing the quality of the outcome or something that's going to take 
a lot longer. So you can see like these two up here, this one's got dark very quickly. This one down here, I've done this five, I've done five layers basically, and it's still not as dark as this transition point up here. So something to think about, the higher the quality, the slower you're gonna go with thinner paint. But if you're looking for something a bit faster, just thicken up your paint a little bit and you'll get a you'll still get a good transition but it's not going to be perfect it's not going to be competition winning and that's not really what we're going for but i wanted to demonstrate exactly what i meant all right enough of my rambling so next what we need to do we're at the stage where we need to start defining our shapes now i say this a lot when it comes to tuition and that sort of stuff readability is such a huge huge factor when it comes to miniature painting because we paint at such a tiny scale, it's so important for someone just to be able to look at a miniature and know exactly what the shapes are. This is why GW paint jobs are so effective because where they edge highlight everything, it frames everything. It gives you clear shape and definition. So you know exactly what you're looking at. And there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with doing that if you like that finish. That works if you like edge highlighting everything if you like every area to be framed and knock yourself out me personally i only generally highlight the edges that are facing upwards or if i specifically feel like a part of the model is not very easily read if i can't really easily tell what the shape of it is from looking at it from afar because again this is a speed paint this is a army piece so what we need to be thinking about is not what that model looks like up close. We need to be thinking about what that model looks like from a distance. Can the opponent or can you see what that model clearly is, what the shapes are from the other side of the table? So remember, readability is massive. Make sure that we're going to put, put that you put your edge highlights in. And also remember, we haven't been very careful with this. So what we're going to do is we're also going to paint in the recess lines. Now, what I probably would say with that is you can use a wash to do that. I'm personally not a fan, but each to their own, there's no issues, but you just need to redefine those recesses and you need to redefine those, you need to define those edge highlights. So before I do the final highlights and adjustments on the purple armor, the last thing that I do is I place the base coat for the bone color down. So this is Vallejo game color heavy brown, but it's just basically like a like a, a muddy brown, I guess. Um, the reason for this is, first of all, it lets me see the shapes of the actual armor that I've painted. So again, it helps with that readability, gives me a good idea of what I'm looking at. Bearing in mind, this is a test model. So I'm only painting one of them. You wouldn't need to do it this way when you're batch painting an army. So again, something that would speed up. But I've placed that brown down because now what I'll do is I'll quickly finish up those edge highlights and I, it gives me a much better impression of what this purple is going to look like because I know what it looks like in relation to everything else that's gonna be on the model. Because this model is only really gonna have two main colors. It'll have green in there as well, but the main colors is basically gonna be purple and bone. So having those two colors down, I know exactly what this paint scheme is going to look like.
So now onto the bone armor. What we're going to do is Vallejo model color USA tan earth. It looks a bit orange on the wet palette. I don't know why that is. I had to change my wet palette camera settings after this. But the idea here is we're going to the shoulder pads because the upper half of the body is obviously going to be brighter because it's the top half. Whole of the shoulder pads we're placing with this with this tan earth color and with the rest of the model. So, for example, the fabric with that previous shadow color, we're going to leave that in the recessed areas and highlight towards the bottom and then the gun. So what we're going to do with the gun to paint to paint it is we're going to base coat the whole of it. But the way we're going to do it is we're going to do it's almost like a dry brush with wet paint. So we're not going to thin the paint when we paint the gun. We're going to be straight out of the pot. The idea is that we're going to remove any excess paint from the paintbrush, but not to the point where we can't get any more off. So the idea is, is we're going to, if that's your the gun, we're going to run the paintbrush along the gun with the tip of the brush. And what it's going to do is it's just going to leave your, it's going to leave that tan earth color along the highest points so almost like a dry brush but it's going to catch the whole of the gun including the flat surfaces and it will give you a natural um it will give you natural shadows where your paintbrush doesn't reach and you can see me doing it on screen now i'm not sure if this is if this brush stroke technique whatever you want to call it has a name um i guarantee you it's not an original technique but gives you a very fast way of painting while still keeping your recess and shapes. So it's just, it's a variation of dry brushing. I have a lot more paint on my brush and I'm pretty much just running the brush along the gun. So it doesn't touch any of the recesses, but it does get good coverage to change the color of the gun. And you can see already, it's quite an effective result very, very quickly. So next up, we're going to get the Vallejo game color bone white. This color is fairly transparent, but we're going to add some water to it to make it even thinner. The idea here is I don't want, um, I'd like to build up a bit of a softer transition. So I thin the paint down. This was thin to probably three parts water to one part paint, but basically you want to put the paint down and it not leave an opaque mark um, when you're painting the fabric. But when you're painting the shoulder pads, you want it slightly stronger. So it leaves an opaque mark, but doesn't mess with any of the details. So with the shoulder pad specifically, the idea here is that we put the bone white down and then next to it, you can see that I've placed down that tan earth, which we had as the midtone, which was the color that we used previously. 
And then what I've done is I've wet blended those two colors together. Now, wet blending is quite a complicated subject. It's not something that I'm going to be able to go over completely in this video, but shameless plug, I do have a video on wet blending on my Patreon if you're interested at all. But the shoulder pad is wet blended together, so we have a highlight along the center, which makes it look a little bit more interesting. It brings it to life. So we're then going to move on to the gun and we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did previously with the previous layer of paint on the gun. The idea here being is that we only need it along the top of the gun. So the whole bottom half of the gun we're effectively going to leave as the previous shadow color. So the final stage when it comes to this miniature is just painting in the details. Now, I haven't done anything crazy with this. The priority is when we're army painting is that our main um, our main areas look good. So those will spend the most time on. So in this case, the purple armor and the bone. And then we don't really have to go too crazy with the rest of the details because no one really looks at them. So I chose green as the third color in this. I quite liked it. So I painted a part of the gun, the eye lenses, that sort of stuff. And then I painted in the, the metallic parts with his details around his waist at the back. And that was it. That's the process for painting this miniature. So I hope it was helpful as always. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you could hit that like button if you enjoyed it does make a huge difference to the channel, especially with it being so young. And if you get the opportunity, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks a lot.